Hi everyone, it's Jessica, the Schoolhouse Stitcher, and welcome to my FossTube channel. Um, I certainly didn't mean to take such a long break between my regular updates, but, you know, life happens sometimes. Uh, I am back here in my office today. Uh, you may have noticed there are a couple changes since last time, or one big change since last time, is that I have the boxes up here and all of my decorative stuff has been moved to the top. Um, this is going to be for my DMC. I currently keep all my DMC on rings, like this. This is not super easy to sort through, um, because it's kind of hard to see the numbers. But also, this happened. The Walmart floss clearance of 2017. Uh, if you live in the Atlanta area, do not go to the Walmart in Sandy Springs because I cleaned them out. It was two cents each. It was great. Um, so yeah, there's no way that I'm fitting all that floss. There's like a thousand skeins, but there's no way all that is fitting in here. So I'm going to move to a snack bag system and put it in the boxes. Um, if you are looking for your own Walmart clearance floss, a couple things I've figured out. Make sure it's a big Walmart. So definitely super centers. I don't even know if they have any that aren't super centers anymore. But make sure it's a big Walmart. If you go back to the craft section and they have the entire they have space for the entire DMC line, you have a chance. I went to one Walmart and it was 10 cents each, and they had um, they just had these little tags that were printed out and stuck in the tray. So you had to move the floss to look at the bottom of the tray and figure out if it was on clearance. That was fun. Um, so I got a few skeins there, but then I went to the one in Sandy Springs and it wasn't marked at all. The, there was nothing. Um, I just happened to remember a few of the numbers from my 10 cent go round that were on clearance. So I got out my phone and um, used the Walmart app to scan it and it rang up, it came up as two cents. So I was like, yes. Um, so look for a big Walmart, look for, if they still have space for the entire DMC line and then and just, um, you know, if you have the Walmart app on your phone, just go down the line and scan skeins. Most of the ones that are on sale um, are in the 900 and 3000 range. So pay attention there especially. There aren't very many in the, the two and three hundreds. Um, but yeah, I'm probably set on um, greens for life. I'm gonna be like 80 years old and my niece is going to be talking to me about cross stitch and I'll be like, I bought this skein during the great Walmart clearance of 2017 and it was two cents. But I'll take it. <laughs> so DMC, DMC finds aside, let's talk about stitching. Um, I had the most questions about my summer schoolhouse series, about my progress on that in the past month. So we'll start with that. Um, I did finish summer schoolhouse part 2.2. So here's 2.1. These come in the same, in the same chart. Um, and this is 2.2. This is Mr. Portly Von Fancy Pants, beekeeper. I think his name is actually Tommy, but he, he's not a Tommy to me. He's Portly Von Fancy Pants. So I stitched this exactly as charted on 28 count mushroom Lugana, stitched one over one. Um, the only change, I did make one change. Um, his coat is charted for old hickory or something. Um, I thought that was a bit too gold. Uh, my skin was a bit golder than what appeared on the cover. Uh, so I actually stitched mine in, I think it was Weeks Cocoa. So it turned out a little bit darker. But I really like it. Um, I have also received, so I finished the first part, I finished the second part. I received the third chart in the mail. This is what this will look like. And 
I have made a good start on that. I got really bogged down in this house. Um, I don't know why, because the first one I zoomed through the house, but this one I just wasn't, I was having some problems. I just wasn't feeling it. Um, and I decided to be clever. These are, um, the windows and the door are charted for Old Hickory. I think that's the name. Um, and I thought I had stitched this, 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 this. Oops, can't see. I had stitched basically all the windows and I was starting on the door, the, the gold parts. And I thought, well, I stitched fancy pants in cocoa. I wonder if it would look better if I stitched these in cocoa. So I ripped out the window frame of one of these just to test it in cocoa. Restitched it in cocoa. I don't like it. It was too dark. It was too dark. It brought down. It made the. It, it didn't go with the rest of the colors in the house. So I ripped that out and restitched it in Old Hickory. That contributed to the delay. Um, plus, I just haven't. I haven't had a lot of time to stitch this past week. So. The only stitching I've done this past week, the vine, this, the cue, and the bird. Um, but the next chart, I've already paid for the next chart through my auto ship program. Um, and that should be coming next week, maybe. So I'm probably not going to finish this before the next one comes, just being real. Um, but we'll, we'll give it a shot. Let's see what happens. Um, I'm still feel like I'm, I'm doing making pretty good progress on it uh, and keeping up reasonably well. Um, and the fourth part I don't think will take as long to stitch because it doesn't have a huge element like the house or the people. Um, it's mostly like a big, I think it's like a big plant so it looks more like this part but bigger. Um, and then it has two extras that come with it. One is a little, a tiny horn book that has the alphabet and a couple of small motifs. And then the other is a strawberry, um, kind of like that shape, but stitched. Um, so I did order the, not just the chart, but um, the horn book uh, finishing pack for that. So I'll get the wooden horn book, which I think you have to paint. And then it also comes with the trim to go around the horn book. Um, so I'm really looking forward to that. And I figure out how I'm going to display them. Because they have this box that you can order um, that's like an unfinished, or it's like a plain white box. And the idea is that you paint it and distress it and decoupage stuff on it um after you factored in shipping it was like seven bucks and i was thinking about getting that but then i happened to be at a thrift store and i found this it looks better on camera the color does mm. in real life it's kind of mm, hideous um i am not a fan of this color i'm most likely like almost certainly, unless you come back and tell me that this, whoever did this, that this thing is worth like $500 and I'll sell it and buy another one that's cheaper. Yeah, because I'm kind of mercenary like that. Um, I am going to paint this. This is a writing desk, like that. And inside, so I'm going to display it with the lid up, like so, and I'll have my little pillows in there, and the horn book, and the strawberry, and depending on how much room there is, maybe some little extras or something to, uh, to fill up the space. Yeah, don't know if you can see that, $3.53 at Goodwill. Um, this is also kind of a, it's kind of a raised, a textured painting. Um, That will most likely be painted. And don't freak out. 
it's not like I, I don't think that this is a very very old piece um, just based on the sound of it um, it doesn't sound like something that's gonna be ancient um, you know you can tell it's kind of that uh, thinner um, thinner pieces of, of wood like they would uh, it actually reminds me of pieces of my childhood dresser um, so yeah it's not like I'm painting over an antique if like I said this is a well-known artist and it's actually worth something then we'll keep it intact and we'll sell it to someone who will appreciate it and I'll get another one but I'm going off the assumption that it's someone's handicraft and while I as a crafter appreciate handicrafts I am going to give it a better life than it would have found sitting in a goodwill so that is my plan for the summer schoolhouse series uh, I'm still really loving this series despite my struggles with the house. Um, I love the colors. I like stitching over one. The Lugana is really, really great. The holes are very clear. Um, it's very, you know, even. It has a nice weight to it. It's not too heavy. It's not too soft. Um, it just perfect. Love it. I'm actually thinking about getting more of that Lugana for a future start. Um, some of my Friends in the Sampler Guild and such are stitching um, the Prairie Schooler alphabet. And I have all of them and I've had them for a very long time. Uh, but it just never started them. So I was thinking about getting a piece of 28 count, uh, maybe antique white Lugana, and stitching this one over one. Um, my other option would be 40 count one over two but the thing with 40 count is I really prefer stitching on some of the um, like link side 40 count um, I would need a yard of that in order to stitch this and they don't whoops stitch this and they don't sell that in half in yards they sell it in half yards at least that's what I've been told um, and also that would be really freaking expensive when I could stitch it one over one on 28 count Lugana and I could get by with a half yard and it would be like 20 bucks. So I might go that route. Um, or I'm leaning toward, toward that option instead. All right, so we got the schoolhouse. I did have a couple of finishes um, aside from the schoolhouse part two. Um, so the last time I when I showed you my finish or, gosh, not the finished braid. It was before that. The last time I made a update video, um, I had just come back from the Marietta Stitching Retreat, and where I had worked on the um, my Quaker sampler um, with the French that I don't even try to pronounce anymore because I mess it up. But like Quaker in six parts, uh, and I finished it. So that's what that looks like. I can go in for a close up. The original um, had this charted to be the year, um, but I opted to replace that with um, the words love games, which is part of a quote from, I think it's William Penn. Um, who is a Quaker, and the full quote was, uh, I believe, force may subdue, but love gains. Um, and for many, many reasons, it was very important to, for me to have that on my sampler. So. I love the bunny. I really love that flower, that basket of, in the very center, this. And the owl, the dancing peacock, the cat, the bird tree, the misshapen hound, bird and babies, and of course the squirrel. Um, this was stitched on 28 count 
Antique White Monaco from Charles Craft, something like that. Uh, it's definitely a Monaco from Charles Craft, so 28 count. Um, I think the color is Antique White. Um, I got it at Michael's or maybe even Walmart a really long time ago. Um, and it is stitched in... <sighs> One moment, please. Yes. I think it is stitched in... Yes, it is stitched in DMC 931. Um, yeah, that's right. 931. I have no idea how many skeins I used. Um, back when I bought this, I or when I kitted this up, um, it was when Walmart was having their initial floss clearance of like 2006 or 2007 and all their DMC was 10 cents this game. Um, so I was just like, what DMC color do they have the most of? Just in case, because I don't want to run out. And I just scooped up a handful. So I have 931 uh, running out my ears. Yeah, I have like six games left over. <laughs> oh... I don't know what I was thinking, but it's gorgeous. I like it. Um, I'm going to probably try to frame this one myself. We'll see how that goes. Um, but that won't be for, that won't be for a little while because I'm kind of lazy about my finishing. Being real here. So after I finished that one, I was kind of in that high of, I finished something. I wonder if I could finish something else. And I did have one project from my magazine starts um, back in January. I think I mentioned I started like 15 projects, 15 or 16 different projects, um, kind of one project a day uh, for the first couple weeks of January. Um, and they all came from magazines. So one of them that I stitched was this. I need something to put behind this. Oh. This is. Bird Teapot Cozy by hmm, the French Needle, I think. Um, it was originally designed to go on a teapot cozy, clearly, hence the name. Um, but it was like a pre-made a pre cozy um, that you stitched directly onto it. I didn't have a use for a teapot cozy, so I just stitched mine on 28-count white I think by Watchel. So there's that. Get this a little bit better with the colors. This was deceptively not difficult but a little tedious because the bird is the only thing that's stitched in large blocks of color. Everything else is stitched um, you know two, three, one, Stitch at a time. So, it was a little bit tedious. But I got it finished and I'm really happy about it. So, I also think I know how I want to finish, finish that one. Um, so, I saw this on another, I saw this on a blog where someone had made um, a project, not a cross stitch project, but a quilted project. And I immediately thought, I think that would be a great finishing idea for this design. So, I bought this book. Cottage Style Charm by Natalie Bird. This is a uh, sewing quilting book. No, I don't quilt. How hard can it really be? I just doomed myself by saying that. Um, but it has some cute projects in here. It has a little quilt and a pillow. There's a little bag. And all of the, uh, the applique and embroidery designs are in here as well. Um, there's a little quilt or hanging. This I'm definitely going to do something with. I think that would be super cute with a little stitch design. It's very, very small. Um, it just calls for like 
a six by six scrap of linen for the front. So it's tiny. Um, table topper. And then this is the reason I bought the book. Pin cushion. What I don't know if you can see is that this side is paper pieced hexagons. Um, here's a better picture. So my idea, we'll see how long it takes me to bring this to fruition, is to take this, enlarge the pattern for this, because it's just um, four pieces that are cut the same size. It's just you cut this piece out of your hexagon, you make a, a larger piece of hexagon fabric, and then you cut it to the shape of the template. Um, but to have this with be the front and then have a um, hexagon sides and then a solid back. Um, I'm not sure if I'll stitch anything for the back or if I'll just do like a solid piece of um, linen or a solid piece of coordinating fabric, but something like that. So that's my finishing idea. It'll probably happen sometime within the next five years. Let's be real. But at least I have a plan, which is more than I can usually say for my finishes. And speaking of finally finished objects, I also have one of those. Um, so I went by the thrift store recently and I saw this frame up on the wall or um, up on the rack. And what caught my eye was it had this little, it was just a little frame button and it said our mortgage button beneath it I'm like, what is a mortgage button um so i reached up and and got it down and i was looking at it i flipped it over and on the back i realized two things first it had a little piece of paper taped to the back that said a mortgage button is basically um was a tradition where after you had paid off your mortgage you would take this little button and insert it into the top of the the bottom post of your staircase or in this person's case you hung it on the wall and second I realized that this thing was custom framed and that it was uh, like three dollars and it was the color of the day so it was half off so I picked it up because it was a square frame and those are very hard to find and when I got home I realized it fit this perfectly so this is Blackbird Designs. It's Spring Fever. This is stitched on, let's see how the colors are. This is stitched on a 36 count Wren from Picture This Plus, and I stitched it uh, one over two with the called for floss. I'm really happy with how this turned out. Um, I still need to, the reason I'm holding it so weird um, I still need to get um, some little point drivers uh, to hold it in because right now it's just uh, laying back there. Um, but yeah, I love this. And I'm super happy that I can get one out of the finishing portfolio and up onto my wall. And I don't even have to, you know, I didn't even have to get the hanging hardware or anything. I just need to get a point driver and I'll get some, I already have some brown craft paper, paper, bleh. so I just need to get some double-sided tape and put that down and we'll be done. It'll be great. Okay. So those are all my finishes. I don't, that's not too shabby for a month, you know, three, you know, three finishes and one FFO. I'm pretty pleased with that. I also worked on a couple of whips. Um, this one, I did not do very much to. Um, after I finished the Bird Teapot Cozy, I was kind of in a, uh, well, I finished three things in quick succession. I fin finished the Quaker Sampler, the um, Summer School House Part 2, and the Bird Teapot Cozy. And after I finished all three of those, I was kind of in a funk where, you know how you get, where you really want to be stitching on something that you've already finished. So, you, you know, none of your whips are really exciting you. 
Um, so I picked up a couple things and um, stitched on this one for just a little bit. So I only finished, I think this flower is the only thing I finished. I might have done these. I can't remember. I mean, that thing still has like eight colors in it. Um, but this is the Garden Sampler by Rosewood Manor. It is a download uh, from Hirschner's website. Just look up um, Garden Sampler and it's very, very cheap. I think it was like three or four dollars. Uh, but this is stitched on 32 Count Valor from Picture This Plus using the called for Valdani threads. Um, which I really like stitching with the Valdani threads. Um, I like that they're a bit fluffier because it makes them um, seem to pop off this fabric a bit more. I do make sure that I use uh, very short lengths of thread and I make sure that I use a needle that's a little bit bigger than what I would use for DMC. Um, so like if I would use a 28, I might use a 26 or a 24. Uh, just to give it so that it doesn't pull, the thread's not pulling at the eye of the needle every time it goes to the fabric. Um, so it has a little bit of room to breathe. But yeah, I really like it. The colors make me happy. And then the other whip I worked on, I went to the Hawker and Holly Stitch Along uh, with my um, Sampler Guild, and Embroiderers Guild, and just some um, you know, local stitchers who show up and want to stitch on any of the Hawker and Holly designs. I think every single one of them is represented by a stitcher in our group um, from Houses of Hawker and Hollow, the very first one, up through Halloween of Hawker and Hollow. I personally am stitching on Village of Hawk Run Hollow, so the second design that came out. Um, and here is where I have gotten to date. So the lot, I know, I need a grime guard. <laughs> I keep, mm, I have this thing out and I keep meaning to make one, but fall is a really busy time for me, y'all. It's just, mm, it's not good. Um, anyway. So I, the last time you saw this, I think I had done the box and I had fin I had done part of the fence. So I finished up the fence. I didn't, let me clarify. I did not do all of this yesterday at the stitch along. Um, I took this out and worked on it um, a couple weeks ago for a couple days then. Um, but anyway, since the last time you saw it, I finished up the fence. I put in some grass, the grass here and I've worked on the church. So I have all of the white in the church. I have at least one, you know, half the stitch done and I'm just kind of working my way back and um, completing the second leg. And this is stitched on 40 count pearled barley by Lakeside Linens um, using DMC threads and it's stitched one over two. Um, I've been really happy with the coverage. I mean, you see this, how dark that green is, um, but you see almost no fabric through that. Um, I have been super happy with the coverage on this. I think pearl bar 40 count pearl barley is my new favorite fabric um, because lakeside dyes uh, tends to shrink a little bit more or draw up a little bit more when it's dyed. Um, the count is actually more like a 42, uh, so that's what gives you such good coverage with the dark colors. Because uh, sometimes even on 40 count, if you're stitching one over two, you see a lot of fabric um, through the stitches. And depending on the design, I like that. I don't like it as much for something like this, uh, where it's not as prim, or not meant to be as prim. Um, but yeah, my, <laughs> My goal of stitching one block every two months is kind of blown because uh, yesterday was September 30th. This should have been done. It's not even close to done. Um, I still have to go through the trees with all their back stitching. Um, but 
I kind of figure at some point, like, okay, so based on my plan, I have two years to get this done, which would mean 10 years for the Hawthorne Hollow designs I currently have, and 12 years if I add in Halloween. But I'm okay with that. Long-term plan. Long-term goals. Um, I kind of figure at some point, um, when summer schoolhouse is done, I'm going to, there will be times when I'm going to get more into this than others. Um, and at those times, um, I can focus a little bit more and knock out, like exceed my goal. You know, just like with everything else, you're going to have ebbs and flows. Um, but it'll get done. I'm not going to stress about it too much. And in addition to my whips and my finishes, I had one new start. This was because um, a while ago I had bought, a bu and I think I showed these, I had bought like seven um, Mill Hill Santa ornaments at a thrift store. And a couple weekends ago, my husband and I were driving up uh, to visit my parents, and I don't know what possessed me to pull one out, but I did, and I discovered I can stitch on perforated paper in the car without getting car sick. This is a game changer. Uh, because I cannot stitch on fabric. I cannot read a book. The only thing I can do in the car without getting car sick is read on my phone. Which uses a lot of data and makes my husband rather unhappy. Uh, but if I can stitch on perforated paper, awesome. So I started... Charm Santa Faces, Series 2. This is Santa Noel. Because he is my favorite. And... Hmm. I just realized I used the wrong color. This is how far I've gotten. The Santa Mistake. This is this color, and this color should be the medium. Whatever, at least it's only like that much and not like, oh, I did the beard in the wrong color. That'll take me like five minutes to redo. It's fine. Um, I did start to film this video um, last week, and that video got deleted. It was a hot mess. It was it was ridiculous. Actually, I should have kept one clip from it because when I was showing one of my whips, I accidentally banged my head on the table. <laughs> like, ow! It was pretty hilarious. Anyway, while I was doing that video, I also noticed a mistake in this, which was that his beard was too far down and too far to the right so I ripped out that part so I still need to fill in his beard and now I guess after this video I'm gonna go rip out this and use a different color hmm. I thought that looked weird follow your instincts people follow your instincts uh, but yeah so now I have I have all the rest of the Santa faces I have other Mill Hill kits that I can do and I'm just so glad that unless we're driving to unless we're in like stop and go traffic or we're driving on a curvy mountain road or something I actually have something I can do in the car other than look out the window and sleep and boring oh I mentioned my that I went to the Hawk Run Hollow stitch along um, so that was tons of fun that happens once a month um, at Caroline's house um, and lots of other floss tubers, lots of other Georgia stitchers come up and we all gather around. Um, but I also went to the Sampler Guild meeting last month or beginning of September. Um, and while we were there, we learned how to stamp on fabric. So I brought a couple um, scraps with me to the meeting to practice on or test it out and I mean a couple um, some people did many more scraps than I did but I just brought these 
This is just a simple background pattern. I'm trying to get the color, but it doesn't want to show. Um, but this is a 32 count meadow root by Lakeside, I believe. Um, or it could be summer khaki. I think it's meadow root. But I just did a simple background pattern. This kind of reminds me, it looks like something that would be appropriate for a bee. It's just saying bee to me. Um, or some kind of insect, but bees are my favorite, so we'll go with that. Um, but I could just see one stitched there in the center. I think that would be cute. Um, so I'm probably going to save that until I find the right bee pattern. And then I did this one, which, yes, it goes this way. Um, this is just some words. This is on a scrap of 32 count weeks. I know, weeks, but I've verified that it's 32 count. Um, but I could just see like a simple, small motif being stitched here in the center. Um, that's my plan for that. Uh, but that was, that was fun. I didn't, the reason I have just a couple and they're very, very small is because I didn't, like I use my scraps to stitch ornaments and stuff on and I do that really frequently. So I didn't want to take really nice pieces I didn't want to take my favorite pieces of fabric and stamp on them and hate them <laughs> or mess it up and render it useless. So I just brought some that were like, yeah, I have tons of that or it's weeks. Who cares if I mess it up? Can't be more messed up than it already is. Um, but that was, that was pretty interesting. I'm not saying I'm going to take up stamping as a hobby because I'm pretty much a, um, one hobby type person. Um, I cross stitch. I used to crochet. I still know how to crochet. I know how to knit a little bit, but cross stitch is pretty much it. That's it. Sewing just to make the cross stitch look pretty. Um, so yeah, I'm probably not going to take it up as like a regular hobby, um, but it was, it was fun to test on and kind of, um, expand my comfort zone a little bit because I'm usually so, oh, I don't want to mess up my fabric. As I just said, I don't want to mess up my fabric. Um, that it gave me a little more, a little more confidence with, uh, doing creative things with my, um, cross stitch. All right. I made sure I covered everything. Got, uh, whips and finishes and FFOs and start. And so I guess all that's left is haul. One of my favorite parts and I'm dropping everything so um and this is like a month's worth so whatever you know as long as I my view is that as long as I can afford it which I can because I actually do um freelance like I have my regular job um but then I also can do freelance like copy editing and such so if I ever want more money from stash I just call up one of the editors I've worked with and say hey do you have anything I can do um, and then they send it to me and they pay me and it's great so I just pay for my stash that way um, but yeah as long as I can afford it and it makes me happy and doesn't completely stress me out then I'll get it and I'm not gonna feel bad about it if it ever stresses me out, which occasionally it does, like I'm never gonna finish everything. Then I'll just stop until I feel better again. And then I'll buy more. Um, so I was at Hobby Lobby and just picked up a little piece of Package of Lambs Gold Jovelin because it was on clearance and it's 28 count. And I thought I could stitch something one over two, or the <laughs> one over one on this. So that'll be good test piece. I haven't stitched one over one on Jovelin. Um, I think the, the feel of it is a little bit different than Lugana and I prefer Lugana, but I mean, you know, for $6.47 for a, a quarter yard or a fat quarter, I'll take it. Um, incidentally, if you're buying fabric at Hobby Lobby, do pay attention. Um, 
kind of don't let things go for a lot um, because the price up here is drastically inflated from the regular retail price online. Um, like if you were to buy it from say one two three stitch. Um, I don't know about Jolin, but Lugana goes for. I was pricing out a fat half for my uh, preschool alphabet, and it was like twenty, twenty two. Most places seem to sell it for between twenty and twenty four dollars for a fat half. I don't know if you noticed the price on here. Well, that's seventeen ninety nine for a fat quarter, eighteen by twenty seven. Yeah. Um, they kind of sucker you in because they want you or they're hoping that you're going to pay the inflated price. Um, so you really have to, if you're paying with a coupon, that just kind of brings it down to closer to retail price than uh, it actually being a really good deal. Just a tip. Alright, also when I was at the thrift store, and this is when I found that frame. Um, I found Christmas Wreath by Victoria Sampler. Um, this has a lot of heart anger, a lot of ribbon embroidery, beads, and it also came with, if I could cover this, because the chart is shown all, shown all over the back, it came with the accessory pack. And it was... $3.50. So I bought this because um, I figured I can practice my, it would be a good practice piece for hardening and ribbon embroidery. And then I could use those skills to work on one of my other Victoria Sampler pieces that I also have accessories packs for that most certainly did not cost $3.50. And when I first got this, I thought, oh, this is the same size because it will fit in that frame. Um, but then I happen to notice that the It's Spring Fever, which is already done, would also fit in the frame. And I like the look of it better. So I went with that option. All right. This next one I'm really excited about. Um, so I was looking on Etsy and I happened to come across one of the um, recommendations that it gave me uh, for like something you know you might like was this Quaker sampler, I think. So I clicked on it, and it was by a store, or by a designer called Quiltify Design. Q-U-I-L-T-I-F-Y Design. Quiltify Design. Um, so I clicked through, and I'm scrolling through their stuff, and I'm like, they have some really nice designs here. Um, they have great samplers. Um, but I've never heard of them before. And they only have a couple dozen sales. So I'm clicking through and I notice that one thing is, um, I see this one sampler and I think it's just your standard, I can never say this word, Veerland? Whatever that one is. You know what I'm talking about. Uh, I think it's just a standard sampler like that so I'm kind of passing it by. But finally I go back and I click on it and I see it is all skulls. And it's awesome. So I snapped that one up. Um, he said, when designing this pattern, I was particularly taken by how gothic the alphabet appeared and was inspired to turn the O into a little skull and crossbones. As you can see here. Before long, skulls began popping up all over the design, from tiny cute skulls to larger skull and crossbones. I think this sampler would be great stitched up in white on a black background for Halloween. And I hope you enjoy stitching this design as much as I did. Best regards, Ben Drew. Because yes, not only do they have awesome designs, but the designer is a man. Love cross-stitch diversity. Now this is... Um, I think it was something like it the price I believe is in I believe they're based in England so I believe the price is in 
pounds or they may be based elsewhere in Europe and it's in euros. I can't remember. Anyway, the price, basically the price if you're in the U.S. tends to fluctuate based on the exchange rate. So I paid a little over $10 um, or like ten fifty or something. I think last time I looked it was a little over 11 but still it's not bad. Now it comes as a PDF chart. One thing to know is that it does come, I'm just going to show you a corner, like this. Um, so it has the uh, filled in squares instead of individual symbols. And I think this is still easy to read. I don't have a problem with this, but just wanted to give you a heads up. The finished size for this is 15 and a half by 14.8 inches. I'm not sure what count that is stitched on though. So let me give you the count size. It's 249 by 237 stitches. But I think this is gonna look really awesome with my other uh, Halloween sampler designs, the Cherish Stitches um, Halloween Quaker and the Prairie Moon Sign is the trick in the treat. Awesome, love it. So I really wanted, yeah, I really wanted to bring some attention to him because, you know, I never expected to have this many people watching me talk about cross stitch. And if I can use that to bring more attention to some of these people in the community who are doing amazing work. I mean, this guy has awesome design. Not just this one, but he has really great Quaker designs. He has a Kraken design, a ship sampler. Um, I think there's a sampler with a rooster, maybe. Um, there's a Galaga sampler. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but if I could, you know, if I can use some of that, if I can use that platform to bring more attention to some of these people in the community who are doing really cool work but may not uh, be noticed as widely. Uh, or have entered into the cross stitch mainstream. I think that'd be really cool. So Quiltify Design is on Etsy. I'll put the link down below. Um, here is his info. Oh, he is in the UK. Go check him out. I think you'll like it. Okay, some of the other stuff I got. I got the Stitch and Post in Nashville, of course, has been going out, is out of business now. Um, but at the very end, they put all of their stuff 70% off. So I went and I had already placed an order there, but I kind of went to, I wanted to make sure that I had gotten everything I wanted from that site before I let it go. So I was looking through and ordered several things and they didn't have... They were out of stock on a lot of the things that I ordered, but they did have some. So, I got JBW Designs French Country Crow. I love how she takes these related, it's not just random motifs, but they're related motifs, like a pumpkin and a cat. Uh, there's a bird, an owl an acorn. So there are all these related motifs in there and puts them together to form the main image. I think this is cool. I'm not going to, I'm probably not going to stitch the words at the bottom, but the crow, or if I do stitch words, I'll change it to something else. But the crow, definitely love that. Um, there's an over one one. Oh, there is. Apparently this, apparently this is the over one model. If you look inside, if I can do this, this is the over two model. I like that finishing. I also picked up Le Poulet, Frenchman. 
by Black Bird Designs. This is one of their Re Reward of Merit series. Uh, you can't really tell because the picture is so dark, but there's a little, um, I guess it's supposed to be a chicken here. I really like the different colored squares and the denseness of that combined with the openness of the and single color of the alphabet and how the color of the alphabet is mirrored in some of the squares down here. Uh, so I just really like, or like the composition of it a lot, I guess. Pick that up, add that to my collection. And then I got, I ordered several Mill Hill kilts, but this is the only one they had in stock. This is Autumn Harvest Collection Pumpkin Patch. This is supposed to be a magnet um, I will, as usual, turn it into an ornament. What's interesting about this is when I looked at it, I thought that this was just one piece, uh, this one piece of perforated paper, one design. It is actually, this is a piece of perforated paper, this is a piece, and they're two separate designs. And you can either attach them front to back, or you can use them as two separate ornaments, or I kind of like how this looks with it overlapped like that. So I might do that. Hmm. The colors are also a little bit brighter than what they appear on the front. Boom. It's pretty bright. But, I mean, it's Halloween. You can get away with brighter colors on Halloween. So I think that's going to be fun. And then eBay or PayPal had this thing on PayPal had this thing through eBay where if you bought if you spent like $25 you'd save five dollars something like that and I had some money in my PayPal account so I went looking to see if there was anything I wanted and I picked up the Magi Trilogy by Mill Hill so this is Melchior. I really like the colors of these. Um, the threads and the beads. But Melchior and Balthazar. Who is the only one whose name that I actually know. And that's just because I grew up at the time when um, that really bad Arnold Schwarzenegger movie, Jingle All the Way. Balthazar. Yeah. And Gaspar. So I picked up those. I also have one more small Mill Hill kit that's on the way that I ordered um, separately to get my total up to 25, but that is shipping from a different vendor and it has not yet arrived. Still waiting. I also, I'm a member of the Dying to Stitch Ladies Prim Society and Colonial Gatherings Clubs. So the latest Ladies Prim Society kit came out. It is from Heartstring Sampler and it's Acorn House Pendrum. And this is stitched, I believe it's on 32 count and it's stitched one over two to give it a more open, primitive look. But these kits are really great. They come with everything you need. So you can see there is the main fabric, the threads, um, the trims just poking out there and then the backing fabric is hidden back here. They even send you a needle. Um, I love getting these. So I'm really looking forward to that. I think that would be a nice, I think it'll be a nice quick stitch because it's just the trees and the house, um, acorn house, and then there's a little design on the, on the top. also ordered a few things from House of Stitches. I noticed she had a few designs that I don't see very often or they're getting more difficult to find. So I picked them up. The first one is the Queen Sampler, Elizabeth I by Plum Street Samplers. Several people on Flosstuber Instagram have stitched this one. I love it. I love Elizabeth I. Love it. Um, Tudor period, Tudor history. 
I picked up Topiary in Bloom, Reward of Merit Paint Keep by Blackbird Designs. I really like this one because it reminds me, this is getting a little harder to find. I don't think it's available from distributors anymore, so it might be going out of print. Uh, but this one reminds me of a limited edition kit that they came out with some time ago called English Garden Sewing Bag. I love that kit. I cannot find it. So this is my consolation prize because it's kind of similar. And if you know of anyone who is selling English Garden Sewing Bag, PM me or email schoolhousestitcher at gmail.com. All one word. No dots or no dots or underscores or hyphens because I would love to buy it. Um, but in the meantime, I have this. And I also picked up the work basket, uh, Old Mac Mary's. What I did not realize when I got this is that a lot of this is stitched using specialty stitches. Let me find where I can peek out. All right. So the barn is stitched with satin stitch um, in rows of satin stitch which I really like because it gives it the look of these old weathered boards. Um, the tree is in satin stitch. The roof is in uh, Smyrna Cross. And the sheep are stitched using French knots, which I might not do because that's a scary little sheep right there. And the darker animals are stitched using like fuzzy stuff or something, which I definitely will not do because one, they're kind of creepy, and two, I like myself, and I'm not going to stitch with fuzzy stuff. All right. Those are my purchases from House of Stitches, and the last few things came from eBay or um, Stash Hello. I was looking for another stitcher had worked on a chart or had showed a chart from this uh, or a design from this on Instagram and I loved it but the chart is out of print and it's a prairie schooler and it has not been or has not yet been re-released by Hawkins uh, so I was keeping it out on eBay to see if it would come up and it did for two dollars including shipping right garden versus I love this is the one that I bought it for this is the one that the, uh, the other stitcher showed I love this so so much and there's this with the bunny and the flowers love it I'm sure they'll re-release it at some point but Really, even when they re-release it, if I can get it in the, the original um, heavy paper, I'm going to do that because the new paper, as we all know, sucks. I also picked up Our House by The Good Housewife. And it's kind of funny because these are charts that Jen of Jen Stitching that showed on her latest video that she got from Cross Stitch Peddler in Decatur. Mm. They must, so I, when I called Cross Stitch Peddler, um, it was before my very first video, I showed my haul that I got from them. When I called uh, a lot of these, those Primitive Nebo and Good Housewife charts that Jen picked up must have been hidden because had they not been hidden, mm, I would have snapped them up. But I had her go through everything that she had in stock and she did not call those out or I would have bought them. Hmm. <laughs> but I did, I did find these on the, the secondary market. Um, so yeah, a little bit of jealousy abated there. But this is Our House by the Good Housewife. A nice fall design. I love the pumpkins and the colors. The only thing I might change is all this grass down here and the grass right here is done in a single color of DMC. I might do it in an over -dyed. Not a crazy over -dyed, just a very subtle one um, to give it just a little bit of, make it look a little bit more like grass. Because this, you know, this looks very much like stone, but this doesn't look like grass. So, um, 
This one I got for, this was $12. Okay, I paid less than retail for this, so I'm good. <laughs> um, what was I gonna say about this one? I was right there. Right there in my head, and I lost it. Oh, I saw another stitcher who had done this, um, I think it was a designer, maybe, who had stitched this one over one. It was so cute and little. The normal size, if you stitch it on 36 count, one over two, is 11 and 3 eighths by nine and five eighths. Um, but stitch one over one on like 28 count is adorable. So I'm not sure if I'm gonna do that or if I'm gonna stitch it on 40 count. We'll see. All right, and this next one I did not pay retail for. Eh, no, I paid more than retail, but it's whatever, it's fine, I love it. Peacocks and Pumpkins by The Good Housewife. I love it, love it, love it. The dancing peacock, or strutting. Whatever you want, whatever you want to call what he's doing, with the sunflowers. Um, so, I must be feeling the fall because I got a. Uh, both of these are very autumnal designs. All right, I think that is all my haul, and that's all I have to show you today. Um, for my plans, I'm going to be working on finishing that uh, the third piece of the Summer Schoolhouse series. I expect the fourth piece to come in the mail pretty soon. Um, I want to continue to work on my Village of Hawk Run Hollow, see if I can't get that block finished up before. The next meeting is in October. Um, I don't think I'm going to be able to make that meeting, but I would like to have the block done before then. Um, so that I'll only be a month behind instead of two months behind on my self-imposed schedule. Uh, but I'm gonna work, yeah, I'll work on those pieces. Uh, my guild has a meeting, I'm going to a cross stitch retreat in a couple weeks at Myrtle Beach. That's the Stitching at the Beach Pals Retreat uh, put on by Amy of Down Sunshine Lane. So I'm looking forward to that. I'm gonna take a couple classes. Um, gonna just have a lot of time to stitch and talk with friends. It'll be really great. The Sunday that I come back, my guild, Sample Guild, is having a meeting so that we can talk about our, um, choose our journey projects for the next year, which apparently, I'm relatively new to the guild, but apparently it's something they do where you pick one project or one whip uh, and make a contract, like you actually sign a contract to finish it uh, by that time next year. And then, you know, you kind of check in on your progress and you have people cheering you on. And I think it sounds like a good idea. I think that'll work better for me than your whips because I'll only have one project that I've chosen instead of like 12 or something, uh, which has not worked out so well for me. Yeah, bet you didn't even know I was doing your whips, did you? Because I didn't mention it. Okay, there's a reason for that failed miserably but uh, but I think I think choosing one project will work out pretty well and you can also choose a bigger project like um, Village of Hawk Run Hollow and you can just say I want to finish these four blocks or these six blocks or whatever and that can be your your journey project so you don't have to you know bop up in there and say I want to finish and they send no you can you can pick by pages if it's a, or motifs, if it's a larger project. But I'm hoping I'll be able to make that meeting. I'm thinking if I drive straight from the beach to the meeting, I might make it and do my, uh, sign my first journey contract. So I'm looking forward to that. But I hope everyone has a great couple of stitching weeks. I hope to check in with you a little bit sooner um, than I did this time. If only because if you could see the piles that are around me right now and that have been sitting in my office for the past month waiting for me to make a video, need to stay on the two week schedule for organizational purposes and sanity purposes, if nothing else. But I hope everyone has a great couple of stitching weeks and I'll catch up with you next time. Bye.